All right, guys, it's time to start moving in a little deeper into the alkanes section where we talk about some of the conformational analysis of alkanes that we do. There's two primary things that we do with conformational analysis. The one is Newman projections and rotational conformers, and the other is taking a look at different conformations of cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is a little bit complicated, and so is Newman prediction, so it does make it necessary to do a lot of practice. And so I wanna make sure that you have a good understanding of what's going on with that. In order to really see uh, what's happening with these different rotational conformations, and eventually with cyclohexane, it's almost impossible to do it without a model kit, or it's, at the very least, looking up some information on the internet and looking for a video that helps you see what's going on. And so I've got a model kit here and I'm gonna to try to use it to help explain what's going on when we start to do these drawings. Because at the end of the day, you, you may, you're not gonna have access to a model kit during an exam or a quiz. And so you're gonna to have to be able to use something from practice related to something that you can draw on a piece of paper and then actually analyze it in terms of its energetics. And so that's where we're gonna start. So let's get on with doing rotational confirmations of cyclo, or excuse me, with rotational confirmations and Newman projection. A rotational confirmation is all about carbon-carbon single bonds. And it's tough because I'm holding the molecule, so my hand is always gonna be in, in the way a little bit. But if you take a look at, I'm looking down a bond. So there's the bond between the two carbons and I'm holding it in such a way that I'm, the camera is pointing right directly down the bond. Now, one of the things you have to realize about single bonds is that there's free rotation. And this particular model kit does a good job of showing me that there's free rotation because I can rotate it. At the end of the day, there are minimum and maximum energy configurations of this rotation. And you can analyze those particular energetic configure or those particular con configurations and their energies by using a particular type of drawing called a Newman projection. And so it's, I, it's gonna be, I'll have to turn my screen on and off because eventually I want to show you this model as we move back and forth, but we're gonna start right here. And so let's make sure that we see what's happening when I look down this, when I look down this molecule's bond. I see that there's an atom in the front and an atom in the back. And I'm holding it in a way that the atom in the front has its three bond, two bonds pointing up and one bond pointing down, and, by, and the opposite is true with the atom in the back. Now I could just turn it over and I could have one bond pointing up in the front and two bonds pointing down. Either way, you know, it's sort of, this, it's the same situation. It's whether or not I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the molecule up or looking at it down. It's the same molecule. So at the end of the day, you're gonna have to be able to use a special drawing and I'm gonna show you here in just a second called the Newman projection. And that Newman projection will help you visualize this particular arrangement of the atoms in a molecule, or in, in a, not necessarily in a, in a molecule, but along a particular bond. So it's, it's going to be helpful if I want to look down the bond between two different carbons. And so here's, here's an, a version of looking down that bond where the bonds in the front are staggered with the bonds in the back. Here's a version where the bonds in the front are eclipsed with the bonds in the back. So they're totally eclipsing each other in this case. Now, it's going to turn out that it's, we can't draw it this way, because if we draw it this way, then we can't see the bonds in the back. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to draw it in a way so that it's just slightly, slightly rotated so that we can see the bonds in the back. And so. Let's get to that drawing part. 
And so again, remember that there's free rotation around this bond. And we wanna think about what are the different energies as I do this rotation. And so I think what you'll start to realize is that if bonds are made out of electrons, electrons don't wanna be next to each other, I'm personifying them again. So that means that the lowest energy confirmation of this particular rotation is when the bonds are staggered. If I take this same thing and I've now eclipsed the bonds, they're as close to each other as they can be, and so this would be the highest energy confirmation. So again, lowest energy, starting to get higher in energy, higher in energy, higher in energy, and now that's the highest, and now we're gonna start to keep going. Now it's starting to get lower, 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 and now we're back to where we were. And so what we wanna do is we wanna use a drawing that helps depict that without a model kit, and that's what we're gonna get onto right now. So let's go ahead and switch into that. All right. So this is how we do it. This, these, are the, these are the two th pictures that you have to be able to draw. The first one is the staggered confirmation. And I know that my drawing isn't particularly good. I'll try to get a better version of it so that it's just a little bit more symmetrical. All right, that's one version of that. But remember, I told you with the model, we could look at it either way. We could, we could look at it with the bond, uh, one bond pointing up or with one bond pointing down on that front atom. And so what's hard, maybe hard to see right now is what atom is which. Now remember, we're looking down this bond. We're, we're, taking, this, we're taking this picture. Let's see if you can see the camera off to the side and we're looking down the bond. So there's the bond we're looking at, we're rotating it so that we look straight down it. And that's what this is. And so I wanna make sure that you understand that this point in the middle, this is the front atom. It, counterintuitively, this big circle in the back, this is the back atom. And so, you know, you would expect that if I'm going to draw a projection of something that the thing in the back is actually projected smaller, but in this case, it's project projected larger. The dot in the front, the center dot, that is the atom that's in the front. And so those three lines that come off that dot are the front, the front three bonds. These are the three bonds that we're looking at in the front. Now, the picture on the bottom is the same. It's just turned around this way. And so remember, they're equivalent. Uh, I'll show you later when you might want to pick one version over the other. It's just going to be for convenience sake at that point. Now, the bonds that are attached to the circle in the back, those are the bonds that are attached to the back atom. And so here, these are the front two bonds. I'm holding the one at the bottom on the, of the third one. And then these three bonds are the ones that are in the back. That's what's attached to the back atom. The same would be true on the bottom picture. And so we, we wanna use those two pictures to represent this staggered confirmation. But remember I told you we also wanna think about it this way when it's, the bonds are as close together as they can be. This is the eclipsed confirmation, staggered Maybe there's two G's. I'm not even gonna worry about it at the moment. But we can take that same thing and we can think about the eclipsed confirmation. Now remember, if they're totally eclipsed, then we can't separate the bonds. And so what we do is we just offset them a little bit so that we can see the bonds in the back. But still at this point, this is still eclipsed. So at the end of the day, remember this is the low energy and this is the high energy. 
And so these two rotational conformations, as, as depicted, they have different energies. And ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to put them on an energy graph. And remember what I said, as we rotate the molecule, we go from low energy to high energy. And so that means there's a minimum, we get to a maximum, and then we start to approach another minimum. At the end of the day, your job will be to determine how, what, what is the relative distance of these minima and maxima compared to each other. Now, you're not gonna have to actually put numbers on the side of the graph for the particular energy, but you do have to understand based on the idea that bonds don't wanna be next to each other, there's a repulsive force and that repulsive force, when they're closer together, causes the energy to go up. You do have to realize which, which configurations are higher than other configurations. So it's a question about relative energies. And so again, you're gonna do a full 365 degree rotation around the bond or, or as for that rotational confirmation. And that particular job requires six different pictures. And so let's get back to this and let's draw the six different pictures. And so what I wanna start off with is ethane. And in this case with ethane, I'm gonna just write it out as a condensed structure. I've got two CH3 groups connected to each other. And so what I wanna do is I wanna look, or cite is the other word I use, cite down the C1, C2 bond. And I'm saying C1 and C2, that's not arbitrary. I literally mean the number of the carbon that you would use in the naming convention. Now, for ethane, it's arbitrary. We're gonna find out that it's arbitrary for propane as well, but at the end of the day, one of the carbons will be C1, one of them will be C2. You're gonna to have to be able to decipher this for larger molecules. And so I might say, look down the C2, C3 bond. And in that case, you really will have to decide, hey, how would I name this molecule? How would I number the longest chain? which carbon is C2, which carbon is C3, and that's what determines which one of the bonds that I'm gonna look down. And so that's important. So the choice of C1 and C2 isn't arbitrary. It really is important that you're able to sort out which one those carbons are. Now, at the moment, it's no big deal because we're talking about ethane, and ethane only has one carbon-carbon bond, and so that's the one we're gonna look at. And so remember, I need to have six different pictures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the six pictures that I need. And in this case, I'm gonna start with the version that has the front carbon where the bond points up. Now, remember that I told you that it's arbitrary, and that's true, it is arbitrary. One of the versions will be better, a better choice than the other. In this case, it's, there's, no, there's no difference. Later, in more advanced cases, I'll show you what, how you decide which version is, more, is, is the better starting version, whether it's this one that's sort of in the shape of a peace symbol, or the, in other words, an upside down Y, and the other, one, uh, the other version is where the Y is right side up. So let's start here. So that's one of the pictures we need. And so I wanna just alternate between staggered and eclipsed versions. Now, notice I put the bond on the back carbon to the right of the carbon and uh, to the bond in the front. It doesn't matter if you pick right or left. That part is arbitrary. But as you go down around the molecule, you need to be consistent. So putting the bond here is inappropriate because I've chosen uh, essentially the bond on the right. And now I, Right and left doesn't actually make any sense as we move around the molecule. But if I were to rotate the iPad, which I can't do because it's not, you're not, you can't see it, it's not a, I'm not, anyway, long story short, it's not technologically possible at the moment. But as we continue to move around the molecule, you wanna make sure that you're drawing the back bond in the eclipsed version in a consistent manner. You will never have a situation where you have two bonds in the back that are in between two bonds in the front. 
you'll always only have one bond in between. So what I mean by in between is there's a bond in the front, there's another bond in the front, I've only got one bond in between them. And you'll see that this holds true for all of the bonds that we draw in the eclipsed version. So let me get rid of those arrows. Finish drawing this out. Here is the eclipsed version. Okay. And so all of the rest of the pictures look exactly the same. So this is one of the things that is easy about Newman projections. The backbone, in other words, the basic uh, picture that you use to describe a set of Newman projections, they'll all be the same alternating pattern. I'll use the same version for eclipsed and staggered throughout the entire analysis. And you need six, six pictures to represent the entire 365 degree rotation. And so here I am drawing the sixth one out now. Let's finish that out. All right, so this is a CH uh, a methane. And so that means there's CH3 groups on both the front carbon and the back carbon. And so what I'm going to do is draw the atoms or groups later on that actually appear around the back carbon. So here's a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. I'm sorry, that's the front carbon. But I'm also going to do the same thing for the back carbon. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Remember, the, the dot in the middle and the big circle in the back, they represent the actual carbons. The lines are the bonds that uh, those carbons have, except for the one between the two carbons. You're looking straight down that bond, so you can't see it because it's going into the, it's perpendicular to the plane of the page or the whiteboard in this case. Now, in all of these versions, all I have all around all the bonds are hydrogens. We already had a little bit of a discussion about what it's like to rotate around that single bond and move from a high energy position to a low energy position. And I said that your job, and let me go ahead and label this, because my, I think the best option is to draw them separately and then label them and then draw those labels on the graph. So A, B, C, D, E, F. And so let's draw the graph. Here's an energy graph. We already said that A is a minimum, that the configuration that's staggered is when the two bo the bonds, the bonds are as far apart from each other as possible. This is called a dihedral angle. And the definition of a dihedral angle is not necessarily important at this particular moment. But what we're doing is we're measuring the ma uh, at the staggered confirmation, the dihedral angles are at their maximum. In the eclipsed confirmation, as the molecule rotates and you've got the two bonds eclipsed, now the two dihedral angles are in their minimum or at their minimum distance, and so that's a maximum. So when I want to label the graph, I've got A as a maximum and B as a or excuse me, A as a minimum and B as a maximum. Your job, your job as organic chemistry students is to take a look at the rest of the configurations and decide, well, okay, I know that C is a minimum because it's a staggered confirmation, but does that mean that the minimum is here, that the minimum will be lower, in other words, higher, lower, or will it actually be the same? And in order to sort that out, whether it's higher, lower, or the same, you have to examine the, the groups that those individual bonds, remember there's six bonds that are shown in each Newman projection, you have to examine them to see what they're interacting with on the, on the next atom over. So you have to see what a particular group on the front atom is interacting with on the back atom. And so let's take a look real quick at these different versions and let's try to decide. Let's take a look at the difference between C and A. 
if I arbitrarily label a hydrogen as red so that we can follow it in its rotation. Now, I am going to arbitrarily rotate, uh, let me actually back up on that red one and let's call this one red because I'm arbitrarily going to pick the back to rotate and I'm going to rotate the back molecule or the back carbon so that that red hydrogen moves around the circle. I'm going to pick clockwise, again, an arbitrary choice, because why not? I, if I were to choose the front carbon to rotate, that's fine. Then the back carbon is what doesn't change. In this case, I've already drawn the six, the six Newman projections, so the front carbon doesn't change. So that means I'm gonna rotate the back. But remember, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter which one you pick as long as you're consistent. If you're gonna move the front, then always move the front. If you're gonna move the back, then always move the back. If you start off moving clockwise first, then continue moving clockwise around the circle. And so if I'm, so now that I picked the back that I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move the back clockwise, then I examine, well, where does it go? Well. Here's the position of that hydrogen in the next picture. I'm going to continue to move around clockwise. There's where the red hydrogen goes in the following picture. Continuing to move around clockwise. There's that red hydrogen in picture D. Continuing to move around clockwise. There's that red hydrogen in picture E. And then finally in the last picture, there's that red hydrogen in picture F. If I rotate it one more time, to get to another staggered confirmation, then eventually I'm just actually back at A. So once you've done, drawn the six pictures, you've accomplished a 365 degree rotation. Of course, we're not going to stop at every degree in between. We're just stopping at the minima and the maxima and examining those relative positions. So let's take a look. On the energy graph, I left that uh, minima exactly where it was for a reason. If you take a look at the difference between A and C, yes, the hydrogen is in a different location, but let's take a look at the other groups that it's interacting with. In this case, the hydrogen is interacting with two other hydrogens adjacent to it. Or in other words, the back hydrogen is interacting with the two hydrogens on the front. That has an energetic uh, value. We don't know what the value is, it's, we set it arbitrarily, and we said, hey, it's there. Once we've decided that it's there, then we set up the next position relative to it. So we set up C relative to A. But we do that by examining the interactions of C. At the end of the day, the red hydrogen is just interacting with two other hydrogens. So what does that mean about the energy? The energy of C, of course, all the other groups are the same. That's why I'm not addressing them, but you do have to look at every interaction. Again, we're all only talking about hydrogen-hydrogen interactions here, so I'm only illustrating the interactions for the red hydrogen at this particular point, but in a full-blown, later, more advanced problem, you have to examine all the interactions. For picture C, all of the interactions are the same. Hydrogens with hydrogens. So what does that mean? If the inter interactions are the same and the geometry is the same, then the energy is the same. So this is the point for C. So I go ahead and connect the dots. Now I'm going to move around that hydrogen and I'm going to take a look at H. Or excuse me, I'm going to take a look at D. And I want to compare D to B. Well, what do I have here? I have a hydrogen connect interacting with a hydrogen in B. And now again, all the other interactions around that ring are the same. I'm not going to look at them from here on out, but you will have to look at every interaction. What do I have in D? I have a hydrogen interacting with a hydrogen. So all of the interactions at the maximum point are the same between B and D. So what does that mean about the energy of B? it is the same as the energy of D. And so as we move around the circle, we'll see that, that this holds true with E and it holds true with F. 
And so we end up with A, B, C, D, E, F, all laid out in relative uh, position to each other based on the energies of the interactions. And so at the end of the day, what happens when I'm over here? Well, remember, I'm going back to A. All right, so this is ethane, and ethane is obviously the simplest example. So let's move it off into the corner, and let's see if we can sort out something that's a little bit more complicated than ethane. Let's do propane. Propane has three carbons. And so I want to cite down the C1, C2 bond. Well, citing down the C1, C2 bond in propane is the same sort of arbitrariness. At the end of the day, I get to choose which one is C1 and which one is C2 because whether I number the molecule from left to right or number it from right to left, I get the same sort of situation. So from naming this molecule, whatever car carbon number one is either the one on the left or it's the one on the right. And so let's take a look. So the, let's take a look at the one on the right. So let's just call this one C1, this one would be C2, and that one would be C3. And so the next thing that I wanna do with this propane, just to make things a little bit more apparent, is I wanna also draw out what are the actual three-dimensional arrangement of the hydrogens around that bond. Here's my CH2, and there's my CH3. I'm only doing it this way a couple of times for illustrative purposes. Later on, you're gonna to have to sort this out yourself with the information that's given. You'll be given enough information to decide. But we decided that we wanted to call this one C1, this one C2, and this one C3. Because we decided that, we wanna go pick whether we wanna use this version or this version as my first staggered confirmation. Remember, the intersection in the middle, that is carbon one. So which one of these versions is actually, one of them is actually more convenient than the other. Not, neither one of them are wrong, but one of them is more convenient. And so let's take a look. If I'm talking about C1, and I have decided that this one is C1, and this one is C2, and I wanna cite down that bond, this is where I'm looking, which one of the versions should I use? Should I use the version where I've got a Y that's pointing the right way or a Y that's pointing upside down? Well, take a look. This bond off of this carbon points in the down direction. I just realized that I actually started with the eclipsed confirmation. So what I want to do is I want to just back up a little bit and I want to redraw this molecule on the, on the board, uh, board and I want to draw it in the correct way. So I'm going to erase. I want to erase this thing. I want to redraw the propane back like this. This one was okay. This is a hydrogen. That's a hydrogen. This one was okay. There's a hydrogen. There's a hydrogen. This one was wrong. Because I, I just want to show you this, that I'm starting with the staggered confirmation and not the eclipsed confirmation. Okay, so let's, let's redo this. Let's kind of just back up and go again. So here's carbon number one. Here's carbon number two. Here's carbon number three. I'm siding down this bond. So one of these is still more convenient than the other. Do I want to start with the upside down Y or do I want to start with the right side up Y? If I'm starting at this point and that point is either there 
or there. Then let's take a look. Well, this bond points generally in the up direction. And so which one of these pictures do I have where the bond in the front carbon points generally in the up direction? That's this one. And so I'm gonna actually start the Newman projections with that version, with the upside down Y. So let me erase that. Let's come back here and so let's start drawing the pictures. I want to start with the upside down Y. Now, remember that it's arbitrary, but just by my own habit, I typically only move the back atoms. And so that's what I'm going to stick with this time, is stick with moving the back atom. So that's the bond I'm rotating. I need three of these pictures. The good thing about Newman projections is that once you've decided which ones you're using, all of the frameworks are the same. So all of the staggered frameworks look the same and all of the eclipsed frameworks look the same. And in every picture, the front atom looks the same. Okay, and so now I want to take a look and I want to start putting things on the atoms as appropriate. Okay, so remember that I'm looking at atom one and I'm looking down to atom two. This circle in the back is atom two. This spot in the front is atom one. So what's connected to atom one? Well, it's a CH3 group, so that means again, there's three hydrogens. I've got a hydrogen that's pointing up, a hydrogen that's pointing left, and a hydrogen that's pointing right. Well, what's connected to the back atom? It's important to see that this bond that's pointing down is this one. And so what is that group in that case? That's a CH3 group there. The other two things that are pointing, uh, these two bonds that are pointing left and right are the two hydrogens in the CH2. So remember the back atom is a CH2 group that's connected to another CH3 group. So the th CH3 group it's connected to is the projection that I'm showing you in the down position. All right, so now that I've gotten this written down, what I want to do is I want to show you uh, how we do this rotation around the different pictures. Now, I, I said before that if I choose the same one in the front position every time, I can just go ahead and draw the front the same way every time because I'm only rotating the back. So the only thing we're trying to do is decide where does this CH3 group end up? Where does that CH3 group end up? Well, if I'm rotating it counterclockwise, then the CH3 group ends up there in that picture. The other things are the hydrogens. If I continue to rotate it, the hydrogens end up being here, and the CH3 ends up being there. CH3 goes up in that picture, the CH3 is over here in that picture, and the CH3 is there in that picture. So I'm filling out the rest of the hydrogens because eventually what I want to do is I want to examine the energies. So if I label them A, B, C, D, E, F, I know that I have a minimum for A because all stack confirmations that are staggered are minima. I have a maxima for B. All energy confirmations that are eclipsed are max uh, are, are energies that are for eclipsed structures are maxima. Now my challenge becomes, well, where's the relationship 
between A and C. What is the minima for C as it's related to A? Well, this is where it starts to get a little bit of a cha uh, challenging. You have to examine all of the different interactions. Well, what do I have in A? And is it the same as C or is it different than C? If it's the same as C, then the geometry and the interactions are the same, the energy is the same. If it's different, then it has a different energy. Okay, so let's take a look. Well, what do I have interacting over here in A? I have this CH3 group, and this CH3 group is interacting with a hydrogen there, and it's interacting with a hydrogen there. What do I have in C? Well, I have a CH3 group interacting with a hydrogen there and a hydrogen there. Yes, they're different hydrogens, but they're still hydrogens. So it turns out that all of the interactions in C are the same. And if you examine it, it's a CH3 interacting with two hydrogens and the rest of the hydrogens are just interacting with hydrogens. So what that means is, is that the energy of C is the same as A again in this case. Well, let's take a look at B versus D. All right. When I take a look at B versus D, I've got in the eclipsed version a CH3 interacting with a hydrogen. And all of the rest of the interactions are hydrogen-hydrogen interactions. This is the same in both cases. So what that means is, is that the energy for D is the same as B. As I go around to E, I find that the interactions are all the same there as in A and C. So the, inner, the energy of E is the same as them. And when I get back to F, I realize that the interactions are the same as B and D, so their energies are the same as well. But when I go down here, I'm going, where am I going again? Remember, I'm going back to A. So in the case of propane, even though I've got a methyl group that's rotating around the carbon-carbon uh, single bond, all of the interactions that it experiences at the minima and the maxima, they're all the same. Because they're all the same, the energies of, are the same of the respective maxima, and the energies of the minima are the same. And so let's take a look at a situation where it probably isn't going to be true. Let's take it one step further and let's look at butane. All right, and so I'm make sure I draw this one correctly. Butane has four carbons. One, two, three, four. If I want to cite down C2, C3 bond, I have to pick C2 and C3. In this case, it is, while it's, it's still arbitrary because when you name the molecule, you would pick either, the, either this carbon as C2 or this carbon as C2. The one that you pick will help you decide which one of the versions of the Newman projection that I wanna use. So let's flip it around. Let's go ahead and draw this Newman projection to start with. So I want to use the Newman projection where the front carbon, C2, is a Y. So that means that on the front carbon, I have a bond pointing down and a bond pointing left and right. So if I draw out the rest of the bonds, and these, are, remember, are to hydrogens, which one of the two bonds would be the better bond? I'm, I'm doing this backwards, right? Because in the problem, I'm going to give you the structure. I'm going to tell you to cite down a particular bond. And based on that structure, there might only be one choice for C2 or C or whatever it is. In this case, there is a choice. And so I want you to see why, the, why, this, why choosing one of the versions over the other one, in other words, Y versus upside down Y, why one of them is more convenient uh, is, is going to be helpful. I said this time, let's go ahead and start with this picture with the Y right side up. And that way I want you to dis see if you can pick which one of the carbons would be better to call carbon two? The front carbon has something pointing down. So does that mean I'm looking there? Or does that mean that I'm looking there? Well, if I'm looking at the, at, for, uh, if I'm looking from the left towards the right, in other words, this direction, 
then I'm looking at a carbon that has a bond pointing down. If I'm looking this direction, then I'm looking at a carbon that has a bond pointing up. And so that means because I arbitrarily decided that I want to use this particular picture, then I want to label the carbon on the uh, left as carbon number one and the carbon on the right as carbon number two. Remember, you could just as easily have picked the other picture and it wouldn't matter. All right, but now that I've done that, let's sort everything else out. This is a CH3 and so is this. And so I wanna put those things on the molecule the way they appear. So I have a CH3 that points down. The rest of the other two things are hydrogens. On the back, I have a CH3 that points up. The other things are hydrogens. And so remember, I wanna arbitrarily rotate the back molecule. So the front on all of my different conformations will look the same. Upside down Y with CH3. Pointing down. Upside down Y with CH3 pointing down. Oops, that one's eclipsed. Here's the staggered version. Upside down Y, CH3 pointing down. Upside down Y, CH3 pointing down. Upside down Y, CH3 pointing down. All right, so the rest is to figure out the back. If I'm gonna point the back, or use the back to rotate, and let's go ahead and rotate it counterclockwise, where does that CH3 end up? Well, in this picture, it ends up here. If I continue to rotate around the molecule, it ends up here. If I continue to rotate, it ends up there. If I continue to rotate, it ends up there. And as I continue to rotate in the last picture, it ends up there. Everything else is hydrogens, and so I can go ahead and write those in. All right, now that I have the, three the six pictures, my job is to draw the energy graph. Now remember, the energy of A and the energy of B are somewhat arbitrary. You can pick them. You know that they're minima and you know that they're maxima. Make sure that on your test or your exam or your quiz or your homework, you label each picture so that the instructor knows what you're looking at. Here's the thing though, now that I've done A and B, I wanna examine C and decide, is the energy of C different or the same as energy of A? And again, remember, what am I looking at? I'm looking at interactions. What is the CH3 group interacting with here? It's interacting with two hydrogens. What is the CH3 group down here interacting with? Well, it's interacting with two hydrogens. Let's take a look at C. What's the CH3 group interacting with here? Well, on the left, it's interacting with a hydrogen, but on the right, it's interacting with another CH3 group. Same thing is true with the other CH3 group. It's interacting with a hydrogen there, but that other CH3 group uh, on the left. So in this case, you've got a CH3 group that has moved closer to the other CH3 group. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen for a second. Because I want to show you what we're talking about. So I want to get out the model kit. And I want to, I want to show you the bond that we're looking down. So we're looking down this bond. 
if you see down that bond, I have a CH3 pointing up and a CH3 pointing back. As I rotate into the eclipsed version, those two CH3 groups start to move closer and closer together. And look what happens. Look how close those atoms are. The model is a fairly accurate depiction of what the space between those uh, atoms are. Not so, so accurate, but accurate enough that you get the idea that in the staggered conformation, those groups aren't nearly as interactive with each other as when they're in this conformation. So even when they're staggered like this, that's higher energy than when they're staggered like this. In fact, this, inner, this particular rotational conformation, where they're staggered yet closer together, it has its own name. It's this, this version of the staggered conformation is gauche. These, this is a gauche conformation, and this is the anti-conformation. So when the two groups in the front and back are anti of each other, it's the lowest energy. As they move around and become gauche, there's still minima on the potential energy surface, but in this case, they're no longer the lowest part of the potential energy surface. It's not the most favorable configuration. So let's go back to the screen. Let's see if we can pick out those different versions. So here is that anti-confirmation, and here is that gauche confirmation. What about E? It's also gauche. It's just gauche on the other side. So you have the two CH3 groups interacting with each other. That's really the important part that we want to show you. The two CH3 groups close together is not as favorable a condition as the two CH3 groups being further apart. So yes, C and E are both minima, but are they higher energy, lower energy, or the same as A? Well, because the interactions are gauche, they're actually higher energy than A. So here's C. So now the next question is to compare D with the energy of B. Well, look what we have. The two CH3 groups are as close together as they can possibly be. And so this situation is also higher energy. So yes, picture D is a maxima, but compared to B, it's even higher in energy. And so you have to be able to determine that and show it on the graph. What about E? Is it the same as A, different than A? How about compared to C? Well, at the end of the day, the interactions in C are the same as they are in E. You've got two methyl groups, and they're staggered in a staggered conformation, but they're, they have, they're in a gauche uh, interaction. The in other interactions are all identical, and because the geometry is the same, the interactions are the same, they're the same energy. So E compared to C is the same, but they're both still higher than A. Okay, so finally, what about, uh, what about the, the energy of F? Well, again, at this point in F, the CH3s are no longer interacting with each other. Now they're interacting with hydrogens again. The energy of F is the same as B because the geometries are the same and the interactions are the same. And so now we've got this situation, remember now we're gonna go back to A. We've got a situation where we have a global minimum. In other words, here's the minimum on the potential energy surface that's the lowest minimum. We also have a global maximum. Here's the maximum that's the highest point on the potential energy surface. So it's the global maximum. We have some local minima. Red asterisk, those are local minima. 
because they're while they're minima, they're not the global minima. So they're only minima in that particular location of the potential energy surface. We have some maxima, double dagger here, that are local maxima. Yes, they are maximum inflection points in the graph, but they're not the highest. So they're just considered local in that area. And so your job is to be able to take a problem, lay out all six Newman projections, and draw a potential energy graph. And so let's take this out. Let's do one example so that you can see it worked all the way through of something that I might give you in the course. So let's take a molecule that looks like this. I might do something like this. And I might say, sight down. C2, C3, determine the potential energy surface. So in this case, you have to decide where C2 is. It's not arbitrary. So that means that you have to determine where the second carbon is based on the numbering scheme of whatever, or however way you would name this. So how would I name it? Well, I would number it in the direction that gets me to the substituent the fastest, so I would do one, two, three, four, five that way. And so that uh, means that carbon two has specifically been designated as this carbon. And so this is what I was talking about earlier when I said that now picking the upside down Y or the right side up Y will be convenient if you choose the right one. Now we know that we have to look this direction. If we have to look this direction down C2, C3, what do we see on the front carbon, the C2 carbon? Do we see the bond pointing up or do we see the bond pointing down? Well, in this case, we see this bond pointing up. So that means it's probably more convenient to start with this particular picture. Now that I've decided that it's more convenient to start with that particular picture, I can go ahead and draw out the rest of my staggered and eclipsed confirmations. Staggered, eclipsed, Staggered, and then finally, oh, look at this one, and look at this one. I've made mistakes in my drawings. Remember that I have to be consistent in the way that I draw those back bonds. So if I'm drawing it to the right, I have to continue along in that vein. So that means that that bond should actually be placed here. That bond should be placed there, 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 and there. Good, now I'm done. So let's take a look at, let's put everything in the correct position. There's gonna be a little bit of a challenge in deciding which direction the CH3 groups go on that front carbon. Well, we already know that there's a CH3 that points up. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in in all these locations. This is the first time when you really have to start to be able to see things in three dimensions. So looking down that bond, the C2-C3 bond, does the CH3 point left or does the CH3 point right? You get a different answer whether or not the CH3 is coming away from you or coming towards you. In this case, since it's coming towards you, if I were to, all right, so here's the CH3 coming towards you. So if I rotate it and look down that bond, then that means that it's on the what? 
Um, I, I'm confused because I don't know if the camera's doing the right thing. I did show it to you coming towards you. Let me make sure. Da -da 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 -da. Coming towards me, rotate it around. Uh, but it's coming towards me in this direction. Hold on. Aha. All right. So. Sorry, I have to do it this way. There we go. It's coming towards you from right to left, and that should be correct, right? Uh, she's, I don't know if the camera's doing me justice because the camera looks to me, it's always a mirror image. So I think if I'm doing this right, you should get that this, this CH3 group, and I'll apologize if that was confusing because of the camera being a mirror image for me and maybe not for you. This CH3 is coming towards you. So if you were to rotate this molecule and look directly along this bond, then this CH3 moves to the left. And, and it's really important that you be able to see that. You might have to manipulate your own molecule and your own model kit to see that. Because if you don't put that CH3 on the left, you won't be drawing the correct structure and you definitely could get the wrong answer. So let's go ahead and sort that the rest of that out. That means that the CH3, remember we're always going to move the back. That means the CH3 is always in the same location in the front. And so the rest of this stuff is hydrogen in the front. There's only one other bond. It's hydrogen. I need to go back and fix that one. The CH3 stays in location. Okay, let's take a look at the back. What's on that back carbon? Well, on the back carbon, I've got, it's, this time it's not a CH3 group. On the back carbon this time, I do have a bond pointing down, but it's not a CH3 group. It's an ethyl group. The other two things are still hydrogens, and so I want to lift them there. And so now let's think about this rotation, because remember, if I'm rotating the back, that's the one that I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, I'm going to rotate clockwise, because that's the way that I've been doing it up to this point. And so that means the, CA, the ethyl group goes from being down to being over here. And that means the other things are still hydrogens. And now here's the ethyl group. There's the two hydrogens. Here's the ethyl group. There's the two hydrogens. Here's the ethyl group. Here's the two hydrogens. Here's the ethyl group. Here's the two hydrogens. Now that I've got, that's the correct drawing. Now that I have the correct drawing, I can label all of the different molecules, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And now I can start to do the last bit of this puzzle which is drawing the potential energy surface. Okay, so remember, the relative positions of A and B are arbitrary when you first lay them out. But now that you've laid them out, everything else has to be in the correct position relative to those two. In order to do that, you have to examine the interactions. Well, let's take a look. In A, what do I have interacting? In A, I have the ethyl group interacting with a CH3 on the left and a hydrogen on the right. Above, I have the CH3 group interacting with two hydrogens. Let's take a look at C. Well, what's happening with the ethyl group? The ethyl group is now interacting with both CH3s. So this means, or at least it should have mean to you at this point that the next minima, the minima for, minima for C, is higher energy than the minima for A, because the interactions are greater. The larger the groups are, the more repulsive forces there are, and the higher the energy becomes. Well, let's take a look at D now. What do we have with D? Well, with D, Compared to B, 
I had the CH3 interacting with an ethyl group there, the CH3 interacting with an ethyl group there, and two hydrogens. Well, it looks like that's the same thing that's going on in D. A CH3 with a hydrogen, an ethyl with a CH3, and two hydrogens. So that means that the maxima associated with D is the same as B. So far, so good, right? All right, let's take a look at E. What's the energy of interactions there? I've got the ethyl group interacting with a methyl on one side, and the ethyl group interacting with a hydrogen on the other side, and then I've got the CH3 group interacting with two hydrogens. To me, that looks the same as A. Ethyl group interacting with a CH3 and a hydrogen, and the CH3 group interacting with two hydrogens. So that's telling me that the energy for E should be the same as A. And let's, let's just make sure that we're trying to draw it the same as A with as much precision as possible. So that gives us one last bit to figure out. What about the energy of F? Well, what do we have interacting? Well, look, all of the, C the CH3 groups are both interacting with hydrogens, and the ethyl group is interacting with a hydrogen. We have all groups that are not hydrogens, in this case, interacting with hydrogens, which are small. So that means this is, even though this is a maximum, it's the best possible configuration, as far as energy is concerned, for that maximum. Therefore, it's lower energy than B and D. Now, here's the thing that you won't ever know. You won't ever know, even though this maximum for F, oh, you do actually know this, never mind. Oh, no, you don't know. What you don't know is whether or not this maximum is lower than C or higher than C. You don't know that. So it's sort of an arbitrary point at this point. You can go to a book, you can get the energies of the interactions between the different molecules or between the different groups, and you can measure what those energies are, and you could add them up and you could determine for yourself what it is. Uh, in the art class, you don't actually need to know that. And so this is a qualitative analysis. And so, what, this is all we do know. We know that E and A are the same. We know that C is higher than E and A. We know that B and D are the same. And we know that F is higher or is lower than B and D. That's all we know. And then as we continue to go around, we get back to A. So what do we have? In this case, we have B and D. They're the global maximum. There's two of them. We have F is a local maxima. In this case, it's the local maximum since there's only one. We have A and E as the global minimum and C as a local minima or minimum since there's only one. Okay, so hopefully what you've done is you've taken a look at that and you have figured out that you got some work to do when it comes to taking a look at the structure, deciding how to number the structure, based on that, deciding which Newman projection you want to start with, then laying out all the frameworks for all the staggered and eclipsed confirmations of the Newman projections, then putting all of the groups on the front carbon and the back carbon correctly, deciding which one you want to rotate and then rotating them stepwise 
and adjusting the picture along the way. Once you've done that, then you want to examine all the pictures qualitatively and create a potential energy diagram that illustrates the relative positions of the energies. It's a lot of work to do, and there's a lot of different possible molecules that can get thrown at you. So do some practice, make sure you got that down, and if you need some help, let me know. That's good for now.